This is my current laptop. It's a maxed out 2015 MacBook Pro. And there are a lot of people online that say this is their favorite Mac. They think it's the best MacBook ever. That is before Apple it up. At this point, this laptop is almost seven years old and it's a war veteran. This is the machine I've been using for all my video editing, my product design, and my procrastination. However, it's also at a point where just having a few Chrome tabs open makes the fan run passionately. When I was importing 1080p footage from my old GoPro and my iPhones, this thing was the king. But that all changed once this thing entered the picture. It's a Sony a7S III and it's a beast. Over the last few months, I've been using it to record my travels in 4K at 60 frames per second. That would produce some juicy files. And when I would import those files into my 2015 MacBook Pro, the Mac would get performance anxiety and completely freeze up. Kind of like me before videos sometimes. An alternative was to spend hours generating something called proxy footage, which is kind of like mushing up food to feed a baby bird. And even that didn't work that well. So overall it made video editing slow and frustrating. Once that service battery warning started coming up, that was my laptop's way of saying, dude, you gotta let me go. I actually wanted to upgrade a long time ago, but after 2015, for whatever reason, Apple decided to take their MacBook Pros and bludgeon them over the head. Apple got rid of the ports that a lot of creative people use. They added a pointless touch bar. They pushed a shitty butterfly keyboard no one liked. And they forced their laptops on a lean diet until they looked like UFC fighters who cut too much weight. I was trapped in the ecosystem slapped around by Apple, but too invested in the relationship to get out. Those are the dark days of being a MacBook Pro user. But now Apple is blessing us with all the features we wanted that they took away in the first place. They even brought back the MagSafe charging cable. I imagine because Tim Cook's cat tripped over the old cable and even he was forced to admit that getting rid of MagSafe was a stupid idea. So I watched the most recent Apple event. I briefly panicked about potential shortages and then I smashed the order button within several minutes. Now these things are not cheap. To the point that I guess when I placed my order, it flagged my bank and they texted me being like, hey man, are you sure you wanna do this? There's only one problem. I'm staying currently at an Airbnb in Calgary and I'm not gonna be here long enough to receive the order. So I had it shipped to my brother's place in BC and it just came in the other day. Now the plan is to drive to his place, grab the laptop and then continue on to our next Airbnb in Whistler. All right, let's go. All right, this is it, the 2021 MacBook Pro with the one terabyte hard drive and 32 gigs of RAM. The first thing I noticed is this thing is thick as f Everything's good when you go thick. It reminds me of my first MacBook Pro from 2011. I gotta point out the obvious, the thing people talk about, the notch. Yes, it's weird. I don't really know where they should have put it. It's almost like the designers at Apple couldn't figure out where to put the webcam, so they just went, whatever. Here you go. The screen is more edge to edge now, so we get some more of that real estate. That's the only real estate I'll ever own. I do also really like the keyboard. I feel like it reminds me of the 2015 keyboard. It has good amount of depth to it. It's not like the butterfly keyboard we used to have in the last generation. It feels good to use. I've only been using this Mac for the last couple of days, but already I'm blown away by the battery life. Mind you, I'm coming off a laptop with a completely shot battery, so the bar is not set that high for me. People who play games have pointed out that the Mac is not the best machine for gamers. I don't really play a lot of games anymore, so I don't really care, but I do know generally people don't get MacBooks for gaming. And if you do want to play games, there are a lot more affordable options out there. All I know is they did not make Diablo 2 Resurrected for the Mac and that sucks shit. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this model. Obviously the jump in performance is night and day, but I am coming off a poverty MacBook. It is crazy to see 4K footage playing in Final Cut Pro. I can have a million artboards open in Sketch at the same time. I can watch 4K videos on YouTube without my MacBook running out of air. It's, it's just great. But people coming in from the last M1 Macs may not be as blown away as I was. For people who don't do any creative work like video production, music production, or design, I would say you don't need this MacBook. Most of the sassy comments I get about the MacBook Pro are from friends who just have an old Mac that they use for internet browsing and they don't see what the big deal is. That's like me telling someone who's into racing cars that they don't need to worry about acceleration, just get an old Toyota 4Runner. The gas mileage is crap and acceleration is really slow. It really depends what you need to do with a computer. End of the day, these things are not cheap, 
I got one because I wanted one and I saved up for it, but you should get whatever you want. Also, I have used PCs for years and I just enjoy the user experience on a Mac a lot more. But if you're interested in making videos, there's no reason you can't do that on a PC with Adobe Premiere. That is my official stance until Apple sends me a bag of money.